If you're in your first microeconomics class and screwed for your next midterm, there's three different types of goods that you need to be aware of when it comes to income elasticity of demand. Inferior, necessities, and luxury goods. And this is how we use the income elasticity of demand formula to determine which type of good we're working with. Hey, and real quick before we get started here, if you want to see where you stand for your next exam, click the link in my bio to take my free practice exam. It's got 25 of the most common types of questions I see professors put on their exams. And after you finish, it gives you a personalized breakdown of how you scored in each of the units. With that being said, first thing I want to make sure we understand here is this formula. The only difference from the price elasticity of demand formula when it comes to income elasticity of demand is the denominator here. Instead of this being percent change in price of the good, it's percent change in income of the consumers. We're assessing a good's income elasticity of demand. In other words, when income changes, how does the quantity demanded of the good change? So let's start with this good right here. Let's say that when income for consumers increases by 10%, the quantity demanded of a given good decreases by 5%. This is interesting here. So consumers now have more money, but they're buying less of the good. This results in an income elasticity of demand value of negative 0.5. In other words, when income increases by 1%, the quantity demanded of the good decreases by 0.5%. Decreases because it's a negative sign right there. Meaning that this is an inferior good. It's inferior because consumers don't prefer it. When they have more income, they're switching to better goods. If this was flipped and our income was decreasing, the quantity demanded of this good would be increasing. Consumers are now poorer and opt to buy the inferior good because it's what they can afford. It's not that they want to buy it, it's just that they have to. If they had more income, they'd be switching to better types of goods. So inferior goods, just look for if the income elasticity of demand value is negative. All right, let's move on to the next type of good here. Let's say that our income is, again, increasing by 10%. And when that happens, let's say the quantity demanded of the good, let's say increases by 5% instead of decreases. This results in an income elasticity of demand value of positive 0.5. In other words, when our income increases by 1%, the quantity demanded of the good increases by 0.5%, indicating that this is a necessity good. When we have more income, we buy a little more of it, but not a bunch more. If this value were higher than one, that indicate that, yeah, we'd be buying a lot more of it when we have more income. But when our income rises by 10%, we're only buying 5% more of the good. Because chances are we already have enough of it, but we're maybe giving ourselves a little cushion or just a little bit extra of the necessity because we want to. We have more income to do so. In other words, we're going to buy this good no matter what. So when we have more income, it's not like we're having a heyday with it and buying a bunch more units. We're just buying a little bit more because we can. 